Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. It is so good to be able to sit here and have a sit down video as we are talking about Skyrim mirrors. And I will put a disclaimer out there that although this is one of my favorite modalities, one of my favorite tools for channeling messages, and we'll talk about that in a minute, I do have the most difficult time consistently with saying the word sky, sky ring, sky ring. My tongue always gets tied. I don't get it. Let's pull it up one more time. Scry. 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 So if you hear me fumbling the word, please trust and believe. It's just, there's certain words that I just always butcher and that is one of them. But like I said, using a skyring mirror or using a crystal ball or crystals in order to channel messages, to connect with spirit, to connect with my higher self, to see the future, all of those things are things that are my absolute favorite and things that I've already mastered at this point in my journey. And I'm excited to share what works for me with you now. Before we dive into skyring and crystal ball gazing, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Rose Forever. Rose Forever is a New York based rose brand launched in 2019. It specializes in designing luxurious flower bouquets with hand picked exquisite roses that last for a year. They only use natural oils to preserve their roses, and the bouquets are handcrafted by professional rose artisans. The roses come in round and square shaped velvet boxes in three sizes, so they are perfect whether for a Parisian style chic home decor or as special event gifts. They create roses in a diverse palette of shades. They never stopped at the standard colors, but also managed to source darker colors such as black and gray. I have two bouquets. One is a pink bouquet that I keep in my bedroom and the ivory that I reserved for greeting my guests at my front door. Rose Forever was generous enough to give everyone discount code $15 off for the rest of this month. That code is BahadiLife15. Thank you Rose Forever for being so generous with your offer. And now back to the video. So what exactly is a scrying mirror and what exactly is scrying? I'm going to use my own definition here because you guys know I'm good with that. How I would define it is a reflective surface or an object with somewhat of a reflective surface that allows you to use it as a portal in order to see into different realms, into the future, or even to channel messages. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but in the past, especially in my New Orleans videos, I would have a lot of positioning of mirrors around me within my space or within my sacred space. And that was because at those times I was using mirrors a lot in order to channel messages, see into the future and see into aspects of myself that my two eyes wouldn't necessarily be able to see. Of course, we have our third eye, higher knowing and our intuition that allows us to see visions internally and to know things internally. But using tools like Skyring mirrors or tarot helps you to see a little further or sometimes just helps you to see period. Now, this isn't something that is necessary. However, if you do feel like you want to explore working with a mirror or explore working with a crystal ball or explore like crystal gazing, or water gazing, these are all things that fall under the category of scrying, skyring, skyring. <laughs> Now, as you guys can see here on my right, I actually have one of the mirrors with me right now. I personally wanted an obsidian mirror and what they sent me is a black plastic mirror, which is fine, but I am gonna be returning it and exchanging it for something else because the mirror that I was originally working with got lost in the move and I'm hoping that I find that box, but for the sake of this video, I wanted to get this ordered. If you want to, I will link it down below in the description box and also in the comments. However, there are so many awesome DIY videos that you can do in order to create your own Skyrim mirror or your own mirror into looking into the future or Skyrim period. Of course, in this video, I'm going to break down the method that works for me, my favorite method for how I channel the not the majority of my messages, but maybe 50% 50, 50 of my messages that I'm sharing here with you guys. I don't necessarily use a scrying mirror. However, this is a really awesome tool 
for beginners or a crystal ball for beginners or even a pocket mirror. I do want to say a quick disclaimer that if you decide to work with a regular mirror like a handheld mirror or just a mirror that you have in your house make sure that you're setting it specific intention for skyring looking into the future channeling messages etc anytime when you're working with a spiritual tool it should no longer be used as a mundane object this is because it then has a totally different energy to it especially a mirror it's essentially being turned into a portal into seeing a different world or seeing into different dimensions different realities your higher self channeling messages and those types of things so you don't want to get that muddled with your everyday objects something that has always worked for me and I'm sure you guys have seen this not only at my altar but also in my videos in the past you'll see that there's special mirrors that I have positioned I never use them for beauty I never use them in order to like look at myself before I go out for the end of the night I do cover them at the end of the day or at the end of the time that it is that I'm using it in order to protect the mirror and also in order to close the chapter if that's what I'm gonna call it in order to close out the session or to shut down the energy of my altar so that it's not just still active and engaged I hope that makes sense and as we go further into this video I'll explain it a little more in detail and more in depth but also for the sake of this video I will be referring to this again this plate because this is an awesome tool for beginners and I feel like it would be beneficial for you to use. But use your own discernment and use your own intuition with what you are gravitating towards. Now when you're working with Skyring mirrors, you want to find something that you are gravitating towards. Like I said already, there are a few different options that you may find most comfortable with in order to work as a tool in order to see the future or to work with Skyring period. One of my favorite tools in the past is to work with a big mirror. Again, I've, I have pictures of that. But also you can use things like crystals for crystal gazing, crystal balls, those traditional orbs that people see a lot, or a mirror like this one a black mirror which I highly do I highly recommend if you're comfortable with working with it because when you have a dimly lit space a dimly lit sacred space if you have candles lit it really helps you to relax it really helps you to dive further into that feminine energy that quote-unquote negative void space and by negative I don't mean something that is evil or malicious but something that is open you know like almost the womb space that helps you to go into the spiritual realms in order to see into the future to connect with the divine to connect with your higher self so that's why I love using black mirrors like this because of how easy and effortless it is to work with it especially if you're a beginner one of the things that is that you need to know is that if you are going to use skyring mirrors or try to skyre skyre sky god damn <laughs> uh oh pumpkin spice is back scry scry I don't know why I butcher it all the time and you guys should know that dyslexia actually runs in my family so maybe that's why I don't know also my memory is shot when it comes to these words but anyways So when you are trying to scry, aka use these reflective surfaces in order to see into the future or to channel messages, you want to make sure that you are comfortable, you want to make sure that you are stable, you want to make sure that you're in a good headspace or spiritual space. The reason is, is that any time when you are opening up any type of door when it comes to connecting with the spiritual realms, it can get pretty wishy-washy. If you are in a vulnerable spiritual place or if you are carrying the energy of fear or you're not comfortable with this process, then you are opening the door to like-minded spiritual energies that may try to play with you, trick you, potentially bring in problematic or troublesome <laughs> messages, or even potentially malicious type of entities. So number one, you want to make sure that you are good mind, body, soul, spirit as much as you can. Along with that, you want to set intention for your highest and greatest good and you also want to call on protection from the higher source or whatever it is that you believe in in order to protect and to guide you while you are working with these mirrors. You should be doing this regardless if you're working with tarot, if you're working with your candles, if you're setting intention, or even if you're praying. It's not that you're doing anything wrong or evil, it's just the fact when you're working with the spiritual world, you have to set intention and you have to be informed and you have to be respectful 
always across the board no matter what your intention is no matter what you're working with no matter what you're doing however of course there's going to be people that do not have positive intention that are using these in order to violate themselves or violate the spiritual world or violate others but if that is truly the case chances are you're probably not looking at this channel <laughs> and you're not watching this video <laughs> the level of spiritual protection is very very real on this end okay so that was number one is making sure that again you are in a good head space a good mental mind body soul spiritual place the next thing that i really recommend when you are working with these mirrors or when you're working with channeling um, or skyring in general is to do it when you actually have the time in order to relax in order to take your time with this process this is one of those things that should not be rushed Ever. Why? Because typically it takes over an hour for most people to kind of settle themselves in to a space that works for them and then also to begin to channel those messages and capture those messages and then close out the circle. Especially if you are not more advanced with that. Because I do this type of stuff daily, sometimes more than one time a day, it can be really quick and easy for me to get into the zone in order to get into the space and I can feel the change in my body and feel the change in my environment when I'm in that space I can also sense when something is up when something is off and then I can switch it up protect myself cleanse out the energy depending but again that typically doesn't happen because I am predominantly in a good space mind body soul and spirit like I said before if there are times where I'm emotional if there are times when I'm feeling weak I already know point blank period now or that day is not a good time in order to pull out my mirror and see into the future or have conversations with spirit in that way that is more a time for prayer and protection, rest, and dormancy, at least for me on my end. To each their own, though. Do you, boo. The next thing that I highly recommend is making sure that you are not going to be disturbed during this time. This means that you turn your phone on do not disturb and you throw it into the lake. I'm just kidding about that, but literally move your phone into another room, close the door, tell people that are in your space, your living space, listen, I'm gonna be meditating for the next two and a half hours. Even if you're not gonna take the, that full two and a half hours in order to channel messages, it still gives you additional time in order to journal and to capture what you did receive as you were channeling and having interruptions during that process is easily one of the most frustrating things ever, trust me. But either way, let the world know or let people in your environment know that you're gonna be off the radar and working on your magic and to respect that space and respect that time and that distance. The next thing that you should do or the next thing that I highly recommend is to light some candles. If you are working in a space that makes you feel comfortable doing that, especially at your sacred space. Another thing that I like to do, especially if I'm on the go or if I'm moving or in motion in some way, AKA like if I'm traveling, is I have a travel mirror that it is that I work with and I just open it, I just kind of gaze into it, sit with that. I have a really awesome ability in order to completely like block out the world around me regardless of what's going on so that's something that works for me but for the majority of you guys i really highly recommend lighting candles at your sacred space at this quiet time that you've allotted for this ritual for this this moment not only does it set the mood it sets the tone it allows you to relax and it helps to bless the space even further and make it more sacred this is one of the reasons why a lot of people like to use skyrim mirrors at night working at night or working when the sun sets is a quiet time for a lot of people where they will find that they are the least disturbed and also the light naturally becomes more darker lighting candles allows you to relax allows you to get into the zone because it feels like the elements themselves are kind of vibing with the vibe i hope that makes sense the next thing you want to do with a skyrim mirror or whatever your skyrim tool is whatever it is that you're gravitating towards is to ground and center yourself this is so important because you don't want to take in the chaos and the madness of the external world or the day into this moment in this space not because it's going to invoke 
or invite in negative tumultuous energies because I hear that a lot but more because it just allows you to concentrate and get into get into the zone and get into a vibe in order to make your time more conducive more efficient right if you're coming in with a muddled jumbled up mind and you're still thinking about you know the emails that is that you haven't sent what Debbie from HR said to you that just totally pissed you off that was so rude and disrespectful all of those things going on in your head they're not going to give you the space that you really could use in order to gain higher wisdom right and sometimes a lot of times the best way to use this time or the best way to access higher wisdom is at least knowing exactly what it is that you want to ask and if you're coming in with a clouded muddled agitated irritated easily distracted mind it's gonna be really hard for you to tap into this space in order for you to ask better higher quality questions during this sacred time i can't tell you how often the spiritual world your ancestors your guides your higher self the divine and your angels how patient they are with us but how agitated they sometimes can be or ir not annoyed or irritated but they're very patient with us but at the same time they're like ask me something that is of more value the best way to do that again is by clearing your mind grounding and center yourself first so that you can at least get into the headspace so that you can have the clarity of mind and the openness in order to ask questions that are going to take you further and make the most from this time from your experience now this grounding and centering process should not be rushed okay there is I want to say maybe 20 minutes 15 to 20 minutes some some of you guys maybe 10 minutes that it takes in order to ground and center yourself it's very similar to meditating slowly breathing relaxing your body letting go of the external world there's no need to rush that process it's has more benefit than not so take your time with the grounding and the centering I know how exciting it can be in order to gaze into the mirror in order to see the future or to start pulling and channeling messages and those types of things I totally get it but still take your time with the grounding process and centering yourself you will not regret it I promise The next thing you're going to want to do is to set intention for this moment, this time with your mirror or your scrying device. Scrying, 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 scrying. Scry. 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 <laughs> Whatever, yo. Scrying, scrying. You guys know what I'm saying. Tomato, tomato. Yeah, next thing you want to do is to set intention for the time that it is that you are using your scrying mirror. Scrying, scrying, scrying. <laughs> you're gonna want to state your goal what is the purpose of you sitting at your altar and using this reflective surface because I'm not gonna say scry scaring scaring using this reflective surface or this crystal or crystal ball or this mirror in order to whatever it is that your goal is know what it is that you want to gain out of this moment right and then also know who it is that you want to work with or what it is that you want to connect with I will give you guys a few examples so some things that I have done in the past is I've used a skyrim mirror skyrim uh, in order to tap into my myself right my higher self and also my inner child this is when I was doing a lot of shadow work and I definitely was doing this at night because that's just me I would sit and I would set the intention for protection I would of course ground and center myself but I would ask my inner child to show up for me through the mirror so that I could hear her see her and begin to work on healing experiences that she may have lived through that she remembers that she has seen that I now don't remember or I don't I may maybe may have blocked out as may have subconsciously blocked out but it is still playing out to this day believe me she came through right and to this day I still carry a small picture of myself my younger self as a token a reminder of those moments when I was working at the mirror when I was channeling when I was reaching out to her because it reminds me that the decisions that I make and that the, the messages that I channeled during those times I still want to apply it to my present because I always want to evolve I always want to make sure that I'm taking care of her and looking out for her this is my inner child right but for you you may be wanting to connect with and to tap into other things for example maybe a 
ancestor, maybe a spiritual guide, maybe a past life of yours. Maybe you want to connect with the divine or Archangel Michael or whoever it is. The moral of the story is you want to set the goal for the time that you are sitting working with the mirror or working with your skyring object device and you also want to know exactly who it is that you want to connect with. You don't want to go into this with open energy. You don't want to just see, okay, who's going to come through mirror? Like you just don't want to do that because when you open the door to the spiritual world, you again, you need to be responsible and respectful. If you are calling out for anything to come in, anything could come in. Chances are you're not going to <laughs> contact a demon. <laughs> Chances are that's not going to happen, but there is a high chance. I'm not saying that it can't happen. I'm just saying there's a high chance that it can for the majority of you, <laughs> the majority of you. But I will say that there are a lot of spiritual beings out there that they're not malicious, but they are a little tricky. They're, they're very tricky. And if they know that you're fearful or if they know that you are open, they will just make a mess. <laughs> and I don't know about you, <laughs> but I don't like messes. <laughs> Now that you've set your goal, now that you set your intention, you are going to work with whatever tool it is that you're deciding to choose to work with. Now for the sake of this video, we are going to hold and work with the black mirror itself. If you are working with a special mirror, a vintage mirror, or if you're working with a crystal ball or crystal quartz, which there are plenty of them, you guys. I also have tiny little orbs that is that I work with, but you wanna gently hold it in your hands after you've grounded and centered yourself, set your intention, and clearly defined who and what it is that you wanna work with. With this process, it's really tough to explain this, but you allow yourself to really kind of relax. One of my favorite things to do is to just close my eyes and not even look at the mirror. Just kind of close my eyes and remember my intention and remember my goal. Of course, you're holding on to your mirror, you're holding on to your tool, but for the sake of this practice right now this is more about you connecting with that tool versus you working with it and pulling from it right away okay and this is really important when you start to relax yourself you're going to try to visualize your eyes your actual physical eyes right you're going to be looking through your physical eyes through your eyelids now some of you guys will say just that doesn't make any sense because my eyes are closed i know I totally get it. I'm doing my best to explain this. What works for me? And if you guys have any questions or if this resonates, definitely let me know down in the comments. So you have your eyes closed and you're looking through your eyelids as they are closed while you're holding your, your mirror, while you're holding your tool. Then you kind of relax and ease your gaze and soften it is the best way that I can use to describe it and allow it to be pulled upwards to the center of your third eye. This, for me, helps to kind of just open that door. It does take time. One of my experiences, and this happened for years, is that I would tap into my third eye and I would feel myself spin. This was because I wasn't grounded. I did not know how to ground and center myself <laughs> at that time as well as I needed to because the spiritual world was so excited to communicate with me. They were like, yes, yeah, she's finally made it. She's finally here. She's finally comfortable. And they would literally just come in so fast, so fast and it would just be so overwhelming and I would spin I would rotate and I'm sure that some of you guys can actually relate to that or you have other experiences so I definitely want to hear them let me know down in the comments for that as well you have connected with your third eye you're looking through your third eye for some of you guys may struggle with this but practice makes perfect and then when you can feel this getting activated when you feel this kind of clicking into motion and and really you know tuning in and high vibing that's when you lower your gaze look into the mirror look into the crystal that is you're you're working with and allow yourself to not stare into it but to drift to kind of pull your gaze into it and allow it to kind of soften and I don't know how to say this, but kind of, um, you're not looking exactly into it, like pinpointing it. You're kind of relaxing your eyes so that it almost is like you, you're seeing the aura of the mirror or the aura in the mirror or aura in the crystal or the aura in whatever it is that you're working with, right? And you just allow yourself to sit with that for maybe five, seven minutes. Of course, use your own discernment when it comes to timing. What is it that feels good for you? You will know. When you start to see images, for me, sometimes they are, they are in the mirror. Sometimes they are in the crystals, 
but the majority of the time they're coming through into my third eye and I will hear certain messages out. Words are a big thing for me as much as I butcher them in my physical reality and in my everyday life. I will channel words like there's no tomorrow. I will typically write everything down as quickly as I can. I'm really big on writing things down, capture as much as I can while I'm holding on to the mirror or while I'm gazing into the mirror or while I'm holding on to the orb. Let me say this, that before I did this video, I did do some, have write down some channeled messages for you. So, one, two, three, four, five. Five pages. Five pages of channeled messages. Of, of things that I've received, messages that I received that are very specific that I used with this mirror before I came on and started sharing this video with you guys now, before I did this informative video, knowing fully well that I was going to do this video, but I wanted to make sure that I was, you know, just using it one more time before I came in and talked. It only made sense. Most of these messages, like four out of the five pages, are things that I wanted to work with for myself, selfishly, but I will say that the last page is definitely for you guys so stay tuned to the very end of this video so you can receive that because that was definitely designed for those who are watching this video who are gravitating towards it I will read it to you definitely however let's continue going on with my guide for how to work the Skyrim mirror so like I was saying take that time in order to channel your messages write them down as best as you can this is why I love having a beautiful elaborate mirror at my altar typically it's at my altar that I do most most of my channeled messages for you guys or for myself or for my clients usually I do this in the morning and usually I do this at night and definitely 1000% full new moons or times where I feel so called to go to my altar to light incense and just to sit to connect right when you have a, a, a more elaborate mirror or a mirror that is designed specifically for this that's kind of propped up on your altar this allows you to gaze into the mirror and then to channel and to write everything down I promise you that when you start writing it down spirit will literally be so patient with you and so kind and give you the time and the space to write what they're telling you write what it is that you're seeing these messages typically come in really quick these vision these prophecies come in really quick just as quickly as they come in they can go out so So when you're done, you then want to come back to yourself, ground yourself, start to just restabilize yourself. So start wiggling your toes, come back to your reality, disconnect. Once you do that, you want to close out the circle. This is where you say, yo, thank you so much, spirit guide. Thank you so much, ancestor's name. Thank you so much, guardian angel. Thank you so much, higher self, for coming through and helping me, you know, communicating with me during this process. I really appreciate it. Having said that, though, now it's time for you to move on I gotta close out the circle so many of you guys will say so mode it be so it is whatever the case is the circle is closed everyone is different with their own routine but I typically am just communicative and I talk to them as it as if I would to someone that is I, I respect one of the other things that a, a little tip that my mom has given me that I do love and that I do use is to clap your hands at the end just kind of clap and break it up not only does this awaken you back into <laughs> your own state of being into your own reality it grounds you it snaps you back in real quick and it also clears out the space awesome right then you just want to take a bath if you want if you need to especially if that's the end of the night play some music if it's during the day in order to get you back into your routine get you grounded get you center drink some water go for a walk sit out in the sun some of you guys like to take a nap it is what it is depending on how it is that you're feeling and vibing if you do fall asleep if you do take a nap make sure that you are documenting your dreams as you move forward you've already closed the circle out so don't expect what you were just originally communicating to you to come through in a way that's a hundred percent but sometimes they do leave little lingering messages or little tokens of appreciation that you can use without you even trying which I love when you are all done when it's all said and done storage is really important right so like you got like I said before I would keep my mirror that I would use at my altar this big elaborate mirror it would always be standing kind of like propped up on my altar a little precariously placed but it never knocked down thank god it was really it is really heavy though but anyways I would have that up and I would put a almost like a cloth like a very elaborate silk cloth over the mirror 
when I wasn't using it or if there wasn't a candle burning at the altar because you guys know that I do work intentions for my clients or I do work intentions for myself. So at those moments at that time, I do leave the mirror open. When it's not in use, when the altar is quiet, when it's resting or dormant, that's when I put a silk cloth over that. If you have a crystal that is that you're working with or if you're working with a sky ring, sky ring, sky ring, sky ring, mirror, <laughs> whatever it is that is handheld, if it's small and portable, you can keep it in a cloth pouch or a velvet pouch, which I highly recommend. You don't want to just leave these things out. You just really don't want to leave them out. If you ever see in the future, my sky ring mirror typically is over in this corner. You probably can't see it, but if it's open, it's because I was just working with it or I'm currently working with it, even though it's not in my hands or in front of my face. Any other time, if I'm done working with it, it's in its pouch, it's folded up and it's put away. Same thing with the crystals that it is that I'm using. You guys can't see this right now, but there is one, I have crystals all over my home, all over my house, buried in my yard, etc., etc., for protection and then some. For my other crystals, they're in a box and that box is strictly there and charmed for protection in order to make sure that nothing comes in, nothing goes out. All right, and then you just kind of pretty much save it for a rainy day. All right, guys, so that is how you work a Skyrim mirror. Again, a black mirror, an obsidian mirror, a crystal ball mirror, or a crystal ball or crystal orbs, whatever it is. I do recommend the Higher Wisdom candle, which is available in the apothecary. I have it lit right now. It's actually not dimly lit but it's quiet it's a very quiet candle today which i really appreciate because that's been my energy for the most part now as i promised let's go ahead and dive into these channel messages that i pulled out using this specific mirror and again if you want this mirror it can be linked down below which i found it on amazon even though it wasn't exactly what it is that i wanted and doesn't match the one that is i have or had i don't even know if i still have it because it's probably in a box somewhere you guys know i manifested one of my dream homes i'm currently living in it now but also in transit there are some things that got lost in the sauce this mirror did work so if you're on a budget you can easily use this mirror if you want to diy your own you can do that too. If you want to invest in an obsidian mirror, absolutely do that, okay? I'm going to be 100% transparent with you because I love things like this. I am going to invest in a obsidian mirror if you guys have any links or resources for that. I'm so willing in order to support other small businesses. Just let me know down in the comments. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into what I pulled for you. <laughs> Okay, should we light some incense for this? I feel like we should. So I am working with Song of India, India Temple Incense Cones, hashtag obsessed. I love these. Love, 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 love. And the mirror that I was working with in order to channel these messages, which I'm about to share with you right now, is this one right here. Okay. If you guys would like to see me do an active channeling with this mirror, by all means, I'm more than happy to do that for you once again. You guys have seen me channel before in the past. Okay, so I wrote down messages from God, source, knowingness. As I said messages from God, Spirit clearly wanted me to say it's source. And then when I said the word source, when they said when they said the word source, the next word that came through is knowingness. They really wanted to um, kind of like define that. So because I feel like it's because it is so open to whatever source, higher source, divine power it is that you are connecting with. It's a source of knowingness, of knowledge and love. So they wanted to say, you are doing a really good job and we, and I, I had to underline we, are so proud of you. There are more than one of us. We show up in all things, look for us and you will see. Then I said, um, we show up in all things. With that, I saw a vision of a lake. I saw this big, big vision of a lake. Um, then I, I asked about it. it said spending, they said, spending time in nature, I wrote down brings, but then they went back and said, will bring. Bring your, your dreams to fruition. We are sorry. Oh, okay, they want to say, we are sorry for the current state. Relax, and as I said state, they said relax the state of your mind and you will see what we see. Relax the state of your mind and you will see what we see. It is, it is okay. It is not hopeless. Do not abandon hope or us or yourself. 
I they also told me tired they said be at ease move period adjust period disorder damn okay I don't know what this word is that I wrote down here um, either rolling structure like a rolling um, disorder um, struct like the structure this the current structure is disordered is big time something okay don't be afraid anymore we are period we are knowing um, cures heals all wounds what yeah, so sometimes when I channel my, my handwriting gets really weird, so sometimes it's hard to read it. But yeah, cures and heals all wounds. Higher love, higher love is all around you. It is what you are, it is what you are seeking. Have you heard, question mark? Have you heard? So that was when they were saying, like, have you heard from us? Have you talked to us? Are you communicating with us? Like, have you heard? I am right here beside you, behind you. You can do this. Worthy. AKA you are worthy, transparency, AKA we're coming through clear, at ease, I'm hearing and I heard, calm the noise, get back to your real true life. Some of you guys, it's gonna be a specific message, but for others, when it says real, it's like an actual authentic experience, an actual authentic state of being that is coming from a higher third eye perspective, which is so awesome that you're watching this video because again, you can use your crystals in order to connect with spirit and to get further insight into that. Um, you've been disformed. Oh, I forgot about this. You've been disformed, disfigured by this mindset, this life, abandon it. This means that some of the things that you guys are thinking is real or some of the things that you're shooting for, some of the things that you, these goals that you set or how you envision it to be are actually disformed state of being or disfigured state of beings that the higher self, the knowingness, the source doesn't want you to take on. They don't want you to be that. They don't want you to morph into that. They're saying that that's disformed and disfigured, um, and they don't like that. Um, it is now okay to be loved as you are. I heard, <laughs> this made me laugh, um, lipstick or chapstick. And there's no judgment with it, but they just said, yeah. Um, and then they said, go ahead. Like, that was the last thing, go ahead. And as I was closing out the circle, they said one last thing, this new world order. And they said, um, you, you missed, what? Dang. You miss true? You miss true? I don't know what that last one is. I'm sorry, guys. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to make anything up. I, you, you miss true? I don't, I think that's what it says. If it comes through and I have a, more clarity on that, I'll write it down in the comments and kind of pin it. Um, but when I said, when they said New World Order, they were like, that's the next, um, to make an offering to talk about that in the next video. Um, using the Skyrim mirror when it comes to channeling messages and also um, open the door up if you guys want to practice working with Skyrim mirror or Skyrim crystals or whatever it is that you're working with um, to go ahead and do that but if you guys want to see a video on that and we're just gonna be working with these these mirrors and other things um, definitely not, let me know down in the comments okay Wow so that was very informative I know that I notoriously am um, miss talk a lot but you know, I like to keep it thorough. I like to give it to you good. Make sure that you're good. Anything that I mentioned in this video will be linked down below as, as well as my favorites that I highly recommend. I'm gonna be looking for your favorites. Where did you get your Skyring mirror? Or if you would love to tag me in pictures of your own setup, your own Skyring mirror, please do that. You can find me at Bahati Life. Also on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and clearly here on the YouTube platform or on the podcast if that's where I post this. All right. Um, until then, you guys, I'm sending you guys all of my love. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if there's other videos that you would love to hear and know about. Clearly, I work with tarot and astrology, so I'm down to do a more informative video about that, like a beginner's guide, because whew, I don't want to go over anybody's head. And if you are desiring to dive deeper into the world of tarot, esoteric symbolism, astrology, and intuitive studies, there is the Sacred Circle Tarot School, which is available for you there, which is my school that I've created. We have over a thousand, by we, I mean me, myself, and I, have over a thousand students internationally, which we meet virtually, and we dive into the study of the tarot every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if that time doesn't work for you, there are video replays of that, so you can catch 
in on the conversation um, that we just absolutely love. Um, a lot of my students have said that this, the classes are more than just education when it comes to the tarot, although we go really, really deep with the knowledge of the tarot. They say that it's life changing, that it's changed their life for the better and consistently changes their life for the better and that the messages and the timing is always divine. So if that's something that you're down for, that's something that you're looking into and that you would you could really benefit from and you know, you're, you're looking for a community that's there for you again links are down below until then thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in my next one Bye.